Hello everyone and welcome back to Whimsy Creek Art. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button down below. And this is part two of our 20 paint pours of 2020. And this is just the top 20 techniques that I chose to cover. There are so many more than 20. So this is number nine. This is a juicer paint pour. This is just like a citrus juicer you would use. And the colors I am using are listed uh, down below, and they're also in part one. Part one, I went over my paint pour recipe and mixing the paint and all that good stuff. Part two, we're just going to get right into it. All right, so I have a few of these blues that I have, and this is Master Touch paint. And I am just going around this citrus, uh, and I do have this propped up on a cup. And it is on a six by six inch ceramic tile. All 20 pours for this series are on six by six ceramic tiles just to keep it kind of cohesive and cohesive, the same colors being used and all that. And so um, I've done some blues and then that beautiful turquoise green and viridian and now some white. And so this is, um, the juicer is a couple inches up above the tile. And so it's just coming down, kind of coming water falling down through the slots in the juicer. And I just keep going, uh, trying to keep the same amount of paint on each coming out, um, equally coming out. If I feel a part is kind of a thinner area, I go back and get a little bit more of that same color on that area. And so um, now I'm going to go ahead and grab this off. You have to have a landing spot. Make sure you try not to drip and just confidently hurry up and grab and take it away. And then pull that cup out of that center as well. And then as you start tipping it and tilting this, yet that center will go ahead and just fill up. So don't worry about that right now. And notice I have my fingers here at each corner, and I'm kind of just helping it get to the edge. And then I'm helping, and I'm just going around. I'm not as I normally do my tilting. Uh, if you've seen the first video, I normally would tilt and then pull back to center. Tilt, pull back to center. I am just going to each of the four corners, tilting it to one corner, tilting it to the next corner, tilting it to the next corner. And that created this real neat kind of starburst effect in the center. All right, so that was number nine for our top 20 of 2020 paint pours. All right, this is paint pour number 10 out of 20, and this is a full swipe. And so we're going to do just one swipe across the entire surface, being a full swipe. And I'm just taking the paint and laying kind of stripes down. Each of my colors do have silicone. They each have only two drops of treadmill oil in them. And video number one has more about that. Uh, I'm just taking each of the kind of the rainbow colors, not in rainbow order, of course, but the color, a bunch of rainbow colors, bright colors, and I'm laying them down. And then I'm going to swipe them with the violet, the purple color, and it does have silicone as well. And I just use uh, copy paper or printer paper, some thin paper, and I lay it across the surface there. And then I gently kind of just let it uh, glide across the top. I don't really push. I try to keep the paper somewhat vertical and laying kind of right across the top. I don't try to pull it up too horizontal from the surface. I just try to pull the paper real gently across the surface, pulling that purple over the top of each of these colors here. And this is a full swipe. You can do swipes in so many various ways. All right, so it didn't get the edges there. And yeah, you know, that's not a big deal. I'm going to tilt it a little bit and we'll lose some of that um, 
the edge that isn't got anything on it we're going to lose that here we're going to tilt it right off the edge so it's really not a big deal and we're also tilting and kind of stretching out those cells and then we're going to go ahead and torch it and when we torch it it'll kind of give it a few more cells but the swipe technique creates cells just right away all right i'm going to grab my palette knife and i am just going to kind of help this corner kind of help this edge a little bit and so right away it looks like it's kind of looks funky on the edge well as the cells pop up and the paint kind of moves around then you won't see that corner won't look quite as uh different as the other so i'm going ahead and torching it this is a creme brulee torch or a chef's torch and i'm only torching it about four to six inches ab above the paint you don't want to actually flame to surface you want it up above just kind of heating it and that's pulling the silicone up through the surface and creating what we call cells in the paint pour world all right here's some close-up shots all right paint pour number 11 a shovel paint pour and i'm just using a kid's shovel from like a sand bucket kit where you get just a shovel and a sand bucket from like dollar tree or anything like that a small child's plastic shovel and so i'm pouring paint in the shovel and i have it tilted a little bit back to where it's not gonna the paint's not gonna flow out the front of the shovel right now i'm just tilting it back to try to create this kind of puddle in there and then once i get enough paint down a little bit of each color drizzled through there then i'm going to put it down on the surface and you can put it straight across the surface you can put it a little bit more wiggly whatever look you're looking for now you're going to want to start dragging the paint the shovel across the surface of the tile and you only want to tilt it about a 20 degree angle you're not going to want to tilt it very much at all or else just all your paint will slide off at one in one spot and you can do it that way if you wanted to more of kind of a dirty pour style with the shovel but for this technique, I'm wanting just a little bit of paint to kind of pull out of the shovel at one time. And you can just go along the surface. If you notice that it's you've missed a spot, you can back up a little tiny bit and just let it drag across and pull the paint out on its own. Now, I've noticed a couple of bald spots, I would say. And so I've kind of now tilted the shovel just to one side. And so I'm getting a ribbon of paint coming through just to kind of fill those bald spots up. And now I'm going to set the shovel aside and pick the tile up and tilt it back and forth to kind of get those edges a little bit. Torch it, give just a quick torch real quick, but... There's not too many cells in this one, and that's okay. Cells aren't always what you're looking for. Some paint pours, I'm looking for a big ton of cells, and some paint pours, I like just a tiny bit, and some paint pours, I'm looking to have no cells at all. You know, it just really depends on the technique and the look you're going for for that particular painting. So I really like this. It almost looks like a abstract landscape or something like that just a few cells and like this abstract bright colorful rainbow hills almost so you could do this uh, shovel technique to create kind of an abstract technique that's a real fun way of doing it too using some neutral natural colors and you can create a great abstract
All right, for paint pour number 12 out of 20, we're going to do a wrecked puddle pour. And so for this particular technique, I personally don't think it looks best with silicone. I think it looks best without silicone. So what I've done is I'm taking the colors that I have the least amount of silicone in. So there is a little bit of silicone in here, but very, very little in these colors. And so I'm taking some of the pastel colors, the lighter colors, and that darker purple for kind of a contrasting color. And I'm randomly layering them together. And if you notice, I'm kind of doing it at random, not putting the same colors in. I'm not just doing five puddles of pur dark purple, then five puddles of light purple on it. I'm kind of doing it with a randomness. But at the same time, I'm paying attention to like, if the right side's getting way too much paint compared to the left side, or I'm trying to make sure I get the same amount of paint on each of the sides, but at a random colors. So now I've ran my finger through it almost like a funky figure eight. And I don't want to mix it too much, but just enough to kind of break up those puddles. Now I'm going to pick it up and tilt it, and I'm using my hand in kind of a L shape to help it to each of the corners, and just kind of help it to the edges a little bit. Uh, then go to the next corner, help it with my fingers to that corner. And so this is what we call a wrecked puddle pour. And see how it's, it just looks best without cells. I am getting a few cells, but no biggie. Now I am not going to torch this one to try to alleviate the cells and not have as many cells. Paint pour number 13 out of 20 as a tree ring paint pour. And this is, again, another one that looks best without cells. You're going to see I'm going to get quite a few cells, quite a few more than I really would like to have gotten because I do have a little bit of silicone in these cups. And so I, what I'm doing is I am gently layering each color on top. So if you pour your paint into your, your pouring cup at a high, up high from the cup, you're going to get quite a bit of gravity is really going to pull those colors all the way through. And you're not going to get definite layers of color in your cup. What on a tree ring paint pour, you want to try to keep your color. You want to try to keep layers, definite layers of each color. So I've got my paint cups real close to that pour cup, and I'm pouring them in right gently right across the surface. I'm not wanting to them to mix up at all. So now that I've got about, um, about two, two and a half ounces for this six inch tile, now I'm going to gently pour it out. Now here you're going to want to be patient. You don't want to really pour it out quickly. You're going to want to gently pour it out, all coming out at once. Now, it's going to naturally kind of start going in a circular motion. You don't really need to get your hand going too much circular. You can kind of help it a bit, but you don't want to go all crazy circular all over. Now, I have done that, and that creates a whole different technique. because That's real pretty if you're trying to create like more of like a flower or a rose, but if you're going to try to create tree rings, you're just very gently letting it kind of just come out of there and it's just going in the center. You're not moving it around too much at all. And then that's the technique is called tree ring paint pour because it kind of gives you the effect of the rings of a tree would look.
for paint pour number 14 out of 20, we do a central blown paint pour. And so I'm going to do this with the color Viridian. And so I've sped the tape up a little bit, and I'm just covering the surface with some of that Viridian color. And this is going to have a little bit of negative space with that color. And this is called a centrally blown paint pour. Uh, it it looks a little bit better on a larger surface, but I did want to share this technique. And so now we've got our base color all down, and then we're just going to put stripes across the center. And you can really, this is a central blown one, but you can do it any direction. You can do it in the corner, and it's a little bit different than a Dutch pour because I don't cover it with that base color. And I'm not using a hairdryer. I'm going to use the uh, aquarium tubing. You can use a straw or anything like that. So I've got, I've got a little bit of paint of each color going down here. I like this contrasting turquoise green with that pink. And um, I'm going to use the aquarium tubing to blow the edges. And the key is to keep that aquarium tubing pretty much vertical with uh, your surface and just feather it back and forth and blow just real lightly. You don't want to blow it real hard or it's just going to shoot it across kind of streams. It's not going to feather it out there. Now I am paying attention to trying not to take all the green and blow it on one side. I'm trying to kind of evenly but not too evenly at the same time blow all three colors out uh, into kind of an organic or abstract shape here and so you can see that there's not too much negative space left that base color left uh, there so on a larger surface this looks really nice if you leave a whole bunch of negative space so you're just gently blowing through this and feathering it back and forth. And that's the nice thing about that aquarium tubing is it gives you kind of that control. It's bendy so you can do that a little bit better than a straw you can. And with the straw, it's hard to get it very um, vertical with your surface. You're probably more at an angle to your surface with a straw. All right, there's some close-ups of our final of our number 14 out of 20. Paint pour 15 out of 20 is a dip paint pour. And this is one of my favorite techniques. So I've got just one of the plastic lids that come with these aluminum pans that I put my uh, tiles into. So I save the plastic lids and I'm just pouring some paint into the plastic lid here. And this is one of my favorite techniques. It's a real fun uh, basic beginner technique but it really creates a beautiful uh, effect here on the tile. The cells are just beautiful. So I'm just getting enough paint down, trying to kind of keep it about the size of a tile. And it, the good thing is it is a clear plastic lid and I have a tile down below it. So I can actually see how big I need to make it, roughly about this, how big, because once you squish the tile, flip it over and squish it in, it'll, it's, it, the paint will squish down and be the size. So you want it roughly the size of your tile. And so you can just pick up the tile and squish it down into that surface. Now it is going to be slippery. So just then tilt it back up and, oh, I got a paint cup right there. I got to get that off, but... You're going to want to just turn it face down into that paint. And then it's going to be slippery here. And you can grab this up from one side, from a corner, and it'll create the cells in a different direction, whichever um, 
way you pick it up. Now I'm going to help the paint down on some of the edges here. And you can watch the cells are popping up as I'm doing that. And it creates a beautiful feathery almost technique. I've done a lot of peacock colors in this technique. It's real makes it real pretty. Paint pour number 16 out of 20 is a kiss paint pour. And so for this paint pour, you're going to want to have two cups. And you're going to want to layer those colors in very carefully, kind of like you do on a tree ring paint pour, so they make definite layers. So you can see I'm kind of pouring them in down the side. And you can see that I've got a couple of extra colors here. So I've got a couple of oranges. And I just took that magenta and that yellow deep color, and I mixed those up two different uh, oranges, two different uh, ratios of the orange or the yellow and the magenta. And I made myself a couple of orange colors. And in each of the cups, I'm kind of going for one cup, some warm colors and one cup, some cool colors. This technique is done best if in each, in one cup, you have, uh, you have contrasting colors in each of the cups. It, it looks best. And so with the cool colors and the warm colors, they're very contrasting. And so I'm layering them very carefully. And you only need about, oh, about one to one and a half ounces in each of the cups. And then you're going to pour them out very carefully and try to get see how they've now kissed together almost. And you're pouring them out just like you would a tree ring pour, but very steadily with both cups together at the same time. And my hands right now are kind of covering the effect, but you're going to see in just a moment what a neat effect it creates, especially with those contrasting colors in each of the two cups. And so um, I'm very carefully at this time now keeping those together, pouring out at the same time. And then as it got to the end, I just pushed the cups together to keep them from dripping and pulled it away real quickly. Now I am pulling them to each of the corners, not really pulling it back to the center at all, like sometimes other techniques I've done, just pulling it to each of the corners real quick. And then you get this beautiful effect with the two different cups. And that is the kiss pour technique. Paint pour number 17 out of 20 is a flip and drag technique. And so I'm just going to layer some colors here in this cup. And if you notice, I am reusing a cup. And I reuse my cups over and over again. That's perfectly fine. You can reuse your cups over and over again. And then after a thick layer of paint kind of gets in there, these plastic cups, you can kind of bend them and flex them a little bit and then pull the layers of paint right out of there. They'll It'll peel right off when it's dry. I don't wash them or anything. I let the paint dry in there and just keep reusing them till there's too much paint, and then I peel that paint out of there. 
So whenever you can, please reuse and recycle your cups and all your paint pouring supplies. All right, so now I have filled that cup up uh, about two thirds of the way. So I've got about two, two ounces of paint in there. And now I'm gonna lay down some of this lighter purple down on the surface. And um, I'm gonna use my finger to kind of get it right up to that flip cup and use my finger to kind of spread it out a little bit. And then after I've got the purple all spread out on the tile, and it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just going to spread it out a little bit here. And then I'm going to take this cup and not really like flip it up normally like a flip cup you would do. I'm going to kind of drag it through this purple. And some of the paint is going to, I'm going to be feathering it up just a little bit as I drag it out, letting bits of paint come up as I'm doing it. And so some of the paint is going kind of underneath the surface of that lighter purple, creating a beautiful uh, lacing kind of technique or lacing effect rather. And so now I have pulled the cup away and now I'm gonna tilt it around and if you notice, it creates beautiful larger cells with also some lacing because some of that paint has been pushed under that lighter purple. Now, if we would have had a larger surface here, this is just a six inch tile. So if we would have had a larger surface here, you would have had much more negative space and it would have created a real neat effect here. And so that is pour number 17 out of 20. Just giving it a quick torch, which that is going to give us some of those smaller cells are going to pop up. Real neat effect with the larger cells and the smaller cells. Paint pour number 18 out of 20 is a string pull feather. Okay, you'll notice I've mixed up some paint in some smaller cups. That is because for a string pull feather, I prefer, prefer to have zero silicone. And on those larger cups, I had already put silicone. So I mixed this paint just the way I have mixed the other paint. I have just not put any silicone in there, zero silicone. And you'll notice there's this new kind of mauve purpley color. And that's by adding just a little bit of purple to some of the magenta. And so then I created this kind of new pink mauve color. So I'm laying, what I do is I have a little plastic, black plastic piece of, um, little piece of plastic here. And I've put the paint down there, uh, uh, line, uh, kind of a line of paint. And now I have a piece of yarn, just regular old yarn. Now you can use uh, all kinds of different string depending on the effect you're wanting. You can even use chain. But right here I'm using regular old yarn you would use to crochet or knit cotton yarn. And just cheapo yarn. And so I have laid that length of yarn down into these uh, purples and pinks. Now off camera before here, I have put a layer of white down. So I have a layer of white on the tile. And now I'm taking that yarn and I am it's soaked in the different colors. I'm laying it across, kind of diagonally across the tile, but also kind of at a curve too. Don't want it straight. Feathers aren't exactly usually perfectly straight. Now you're going to pull the top edge of that yarn straight vertically down across the um, surface one direction. Now I'm going to lay it back down in this paint and I'm going to lay it on the other side now. Trying to somewhat get the same colors here on the yarn at the same spots. You'll notice I kind of squeegeed that excess paint off after the first dip. Now I'm doing the second one, laying it just right along the edge of that first one I did. Somewhat trying to get the paint colors lined up, but they don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna grab that same uh, at one end 
and I'm pulling this, I'm keeping this very, very vertical to the tile. Now, I know you've heard me say this many times, do it vertical to the tile. That really creates a, a more feathery surface across it. All right, so I use Floetrol for my pouring medium. So you'll notice I am getting the cells anyways. I really didn't want a ton of cells, but they're going to automatically come out just because Floetrol kind of does that. So now I dipped the end of the yarn in the darker purple and just drug that down the center to create more of that feather look. Now this top, I'm just kind of pulling that purple up just a little bit slightly, creating it kind of that feathery look. Now I'm noticing here we have kind of a little bit of a gap, but if I pull this purple down into that center line of purple, it makes it more of a natural feather look. It's hard to see here on the wider shot, but when a close up, you can kind of see a little bit better where I pulled that into the center here. And so this is a string pull feather. All right, please let me know if you have any questions. Paint pour 19 out of 20 is again another string pull, but this time instead of feathers, we're going to kind of go in abstract flowers. And again, I don't want any silicone in this at all. So I've got the plastic little piece next to my tile here, and I'm laying some colors down in a line. And uh, this one I'm going to use mainly some uh, blues and a little bit of purple and a little bit of that viridian. And then and off camera, I've also already put a layer of white down on the tile. This is, again, a six-inch ceramic tile. And I'm going to take regular old yarn. And you can use uh, chain, all kinds of string. I've just got a length of yarn. A little bit longer than I did for the feather. The feather I had it about four and a half, five inches, the yarn. This one I have about oh seven inches so i've laid the yarn down in the uh, paint i'm making sure it's nice and soaked with each color and now we'll grab up your yarn and you're going to want to lay your yarn across the paint kind of uh wiggled across the surface here All right, you're just going to kind of loop it back and forth, back and forth here across the surface. And then you're going to want to pull that straight down, just straight down. You don't want to pull it at any sort of angle, just straight across the surface. I kind of squeegee out that excess paint, lay it back into our paint colors here. And you can leave it right there if you wanted just a simple, just the one there or you can continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more, making sure the yarn is soaked with each of those paint colors. I'm poking my finger there to make sure it's dunked down in on each of the colors. Now I'm gonna take that and I like how the top is, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that same effect kind of across the bottom here now. And so I've got it looped back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm going to just pull that string straight, straight down. All right. And again, you can leave it just right there. You can leave it alone. Squeegee out the paint, all the excess paint there. Quite a mess. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more uh, on each side here. So notice I'm not putting as much. I'm not getting the whole length of the yarn. Uh, wet this time. I just need a little bit shorter piece here for the side. So I'm going to loop it back and forth, back and forth, just the same as I've done previously, and pull, and pull it just straight down, just to create a kind of a smaller, shorter one there on the side. And then again, do the same thing for the left side, just dip a little bit 
smaller length of the ribbon or the yarn into the paint. You don't need all of the yarn across the paint, just a short little bit of it. And dip it down there and get it nice and soaked again. And then go ahead and here on the left side, I'm going to do just kind of a smaller little bit there. And this is, creates kind of an abstract flower technique. A uh, real pretty uh, minimal, I like the negative space. All that white is what we would call the negative space there. And all right, that is a string pull flower. All right, last one, 20 out of 20. Thank you so much for watching my 20 out of 20 paint pours. So what we have here is going to be another full swipe, but this time I'm going to kind of smash it with the balloon. And so in the prior full swipe, I had put uh, the paint down in stripes. This one I'm just kind of randomly pouring across the surfaces using those same colors, but I'm going to just... Get those bright kind of rainbow colors down on there, getting a bunch down on the surface. And then I'm going to swipe this with white. And now my white does not have silicone in it. All the colors do have silicone. So I've got a nice good big stripe of white across there. And I went down the side just a little bit of the white. And I need just a little bit more paint to kind of fill in a few bald spots there on the edges. And then I'm just using regular old copy paper or printer paper, real lightweight paper. And I'm going to lay that printer paper into the white and just pull it across the surface real, real lightly. All right. Now we ended up with a little bit of a line across there and a little bit of spot that wasn't swiped through. No biggie. We're going to get rid of that. Okay, we're going to torch it again with the chef's torch or creme brulee torch and go ahead and tilt it. So we're going to tilt that off a little bit where we didn't quite do that. And Now, the top had quite a little stripe of white. Well, I'm going to try to get this tilted down to get the just plain white out of there. So you're thinking right now, oh, there's not much, you know, showing up. Well, here in just a minute, all those bright colors are going to pop out through there. I've got just a regular old balloon, and I don't have it blown up where it's real tight. There's kind of some slack, some give to it, and I'm just lightly kind of kissing it across that surface. Well, when I kiss it across that surface, that color is popping right up out from under that white. And so this is where we do it called balloon smash. And now I'm pulling it off camera and I'm wiping the balloon off each time so it doesn't muddy these colors. I'm wiping it off clean and then I'm pushing it back in, trying to pull some of those colors up from underneath that white. All right, so that'll conclude our part two of our 20 out of 20 paint pours. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have. And I will be releasing this in two parts. This is part two. Then on Monday, I will be releasing a quicker version that will not have any of this tutorial talking bit. It's going to be just straightforward, the pores. For those that aren't really into uh, listening to me explain and give all the tips and explain how I'm doing each of the techniques, there will be on Monday a, um, not really a part three, but all 20 paint pores just really sped up really quickly and put to music. So thank you so much for watching, and I really appreciate each and every one of you.